The convention is very well known and it has been ratified by more than 150 countries, but it's not implemented. In some parts it might be, but in the essential parts for persons with intellectual disabilities it's not implemented. We still have to fight for this implementation and that means we have still to urge governments to deal with the contents of the convention, to compare it with their national laws and to compare it, of course, with the national practice. The task, for instance, of Inclusion International is not to describe things from a legal point of view, no, from a more easy to read and easy to understand point of view. So, for instance, we try to explain the contents of the convention to persons with intellectual disabilities and to the parents and the families in easy words and with good examples. I would say there are two main articles. It's Article 3, the main principles, and it's Article 12, equality before the law. And in my mind, Article 3 is even the most important one because it states that everybody has autonomy and everybody has the right, the freedom of one's choice, to make choices. So this, I think, is the first message of the Convention, to have choices. And now transferring that idea to the legal background, you come to the conclusion Many of these persons with intellectual disability are declined to have legal capacity. So if somebody doesn't have legal capacity, he can make choices, but his choices are ir irrelevant. Because the law states, if you have a guardianship law, for instance, that everything which is stated by a person under guardianship is null and void. All explanations, all decisions must be made by a third person, by the guardian. When the convention was discussed, everybody knew if you state such a principle that everybody has the freedom to make his own choices, then you must deal with the question what is with legal capacity. And the answer of um, the United Nations is a very radical one. It states simply, um, only supported decision-making is allowed any longer. Substitute decision-making by guardians and third persons is prohibited because then you destroy the freedom to make choices. I think Canada, Australia, a few countries are the exceptions only. All other countries, more than 100, 150, have ratified that article without any reservation. From my own experience in many countries, there's hardly any country which so far has really implemented Article 12. There are many, many attempts, many exercises made, and in that respect, I think British Columbia has a leading fun function. They have done a lot to well, to find out good examples um, how to implement Article 12. Other countries like Germany, they try to hide. They just tell you we have ratified, give us time, but nothing happens. So we have to build up some pressure now to ask the governments, what do you intend to do to implement Article 12? What is, I think, not forgotten perhaps, but nearly ignored, is that in the meantime, the Committee of the United Nations, in charge of the implementation of the Convention, it's con it consists of 18 highly qualified experts. They have adopted a so-called general comment on Article 12. That means these 18 experts sat together and they discussed do these governments need some support, some help to interpret Article 12 correctly. 
and this general comment was um, published I think last year and it is full of criticism because one of the main statements in this comment is that most governments misunderstand the contents of Article 12 and many disabled people organizations submitted their ideas and proposals for interpretation and only a few countries five or six one of them was Germany I think the other one was Sweden they answered to these comments all other 150 countries I don't know they did not well they ignored that comment obviously and for instance Germany the official answer was no we did not misunderstand it we have another way to interpret it the main topics in this general comment which is I think very important for instance you mentioned before the best interest term so in many many respects if um, well if lawyers for instance judges don't know how to deal with a child how to deal with a person um, who is intellectually disabled um, they ask questions but they don't get answers or they think the answers are not correct um, they try to find out what could be the best solution for that person and then they ask for the best interest of that person but in that general comment you find a statement it's not allowed any longer to ask for the best interest you have always to find out the will and preferences of the person and now the experts know there are quite a lot of people living in our world who don't have a language or who can't talk or have difficulties to communicate and I think that's our main task now that we try to find out how how these people communicate we have already many many documents in an easy to read language but even an easy to read language can be read only by persons who can read others need sign language they need pictures all that and they need personal assistance so many many relatives are able to understand what a person means because they live together with them so they can act as an interpreter or we we should need new professions for that new professionals just specializing on new models of communication i think that's one of the tasks we have